So just like we want God to forgive us, we have to be willing to forgive them as well. That's all I'm saying. And not carry that in our heart. You don't want that to be. You don't you you don't want that to uh stop your blessing or blessing. Yeah. yeah, hinder your rela hinder your relationship with God. I'm just saying. What you got? Yeah. I I, I, I understand that. And that and that is our ultimate goal. This needs to go in there. Um that's our ultimate goal. Um to not hinder ourselves from um doing the will of God because we already know any anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it is a sin. Mm -hmm. We talked about that last week. Um so it, but all of it, it it just sounds crazy and for us being that it sounds crazy he said he used the foolish things to confound the wise. And we need to begin to operate in that area. With love and kindness have I drawn thee. And he tells us that we need to forgive them seven times 70. Mm. So we need to be just, which is an infinite number. So we need to be able to continue, continuously forgive. And for us, it is a hard pill. Mm -hmm. But that is part of this walk. How to crucify the flesh daily. Our unforgiveness is needed to crucify the flesh daily. The idea is not to be hypocritical, but rather to allow ourselves to be jolted back into the life of Christ. We should be the example of Christ at all times. Mm -hmm. Um I just we got a um a, um comment and I wanted can we find um the question? The question that was posed was it posed to you? The um was posed to what you said. What our, we, our topic is tonight. So um there was a question and the question was in regards to um the post that we had um regarding somebody murdering somebody uh the murdering of someone and it was really um graphic um the details of it all and um we need to understand that our unforgiveness will doom us to hell mm -hmm. point blank no chaser and even in the most horrific circumstances, hmm. it is our job to forgive. It is our responsibility to, to forgive because of the simple fact that he is advocating on our behalf to the Father. <laughs> So we need to be able to <laughs> Jamie, you got back to the ground. I got the So, so the, 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 the process of forgiveness, the process of forgiveness, <laughs> Is that the process of forgiveness? <laughs> to know God, you have to know one thing that God is
I'm not understanding why this, but this word is going to go Okay, I'm going to assume that the clarity of sound is a little bit better. So, 
Um, and hopefully everyone caught what Pastor Lewis was uh was talking about. Um, Romans eight. Um, 6 and 13 for the mindset on the flesh is death but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace for if you are living according to the flesh you must die death the deeds of the body you will live so we have to mortify this flesh I think that that's the beginning of the breaking of the cycle because of the flesh why because it it, it stays on your mind mm -hmm. it'll stay on your mind there won't be a healing process you you can't heal because you're stuck on they did me wrong the Lewis said and if God really sat there I don't care I'm going to get you because you didn't forgive them. What would we need him for? He can't He can't do his job as advocator if we can't do our job. And to beat this thing down, which we call flesh. 2 Corinthians 7 um, and 1. Um, I'm reading from the New American mm -hmm. Standard. And it says, therefore, having these promises, beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Listen, I am a great advocate when I talk to my kids and, 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 and when I talk to, and I'm not just saying my kids because the school, my, the kids that I encounter in school are, um, my kids and, um, I tell them that they are not what their circumstances say they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. Who said that? Who said that? Listen, through some stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, all been through some stuff, and I don't think any of us, through and by the grace of God, look what look like what we've been through. But I know that I can't stay in a position of unforgiveness in that state. Mm -hmm. I've been through some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's really, really, you, you have to really become real with yourself. Mm -hmm. You get this little spiritual backpack on and you want to put everybody's nonsense in your backpack. It's not your burden to carry. First of all, that generational unforgiveness. You need to leave that at the curb. Throw it in the next trash bag because it's not yours to carry. Point blank. Mm -hmm. Um. So you're dealing with the generational stuff. Dealing with the stuff that happened to you. Mm -hmm. Whether you are a child mm -hmm. and, and don't get me wrong. It's not that I can, I'm not telling you to get over it because it's a process of healing. And the thing is this, even in that healing, you're able to go back and help somebody else. So you even in your forgiving, mm -hmm. you don't forget because that's the bridge that brought you over. Mm -hmm. the, the, the problem is, is when you stay on the other side of the bridge, Yeah, you never cross over. Yeah. So you're stuck. You're stuck. And some of us get so complacent with our unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And it it, 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 it because us to become so much more broken. Mm -hmm. We are so much more broken because of our unforgiveness. Yeah. Because we allow it to fester like an infection in a wound. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me jump in here right quick. Let me jump here right quick. I, um, Brother Minister, um, Jackie, Jackie that, that's a very good scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read it. The, the scripture that you um, brought up, and I believe it's in Romans 12 chapter, 12 chapter in the, in the um, 21st verse. Mm -hmm. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil 
with good. And, and, and we as believers, listen, an eye for an eye, and no, 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 no. That we're past that. An eye for an eye. Let God fight for you. Listen, let God listen. Overcome evil with good describes the consequences of the Christian ethics, and the good will prevail over evil. Good will always prevail over. It may look like the evil man or the evil person. Is prevailing. David said, look, I almost slipped when I saw the wicked prosper. And he said, I almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. But God held him fast. And God will hold you fast. You know what I'm saying? It's easy that you jab me, I jab you. You stick me with a spoon, I stick you with a fork. That's easy to do because that's human nature. You understand? That's, but the godly thing is to let it go. But like I said, now when it's their turn, when it's their turn, God ain't going to allow you to rejoice in their downfall. You understand? Because no man will get his glory. No man will get it. Look, look, what, look what it said. Just before the verse 21, this is, um, the verse that I read says, Therefore, if thy enemy, in verse 20, hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him something to drink. For in doing, thou shalt reap coals of fire on their heads. the kingdom. We want to win over to Christ. And Jesus said, what with love and kindness have I joined thee? With love and kindness. I agree, Pastor Shiloh, uh, in regards to the birds flying over your head, but you don't have to let them build a nest. That's for sure. We Too, too many times our, our unforgiveness is from what we allow to rent space. In no, our yeah, minds. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, that. you ain't really add no value to this. So, Listen. um, yeah. My Lord, like I said, he's a God of war and a God of peace. And when God say that's enough, uh, trust me, whether he use you to put your foot down on their neck, hallelujah, or he does it himself, enough will be enough. enough. Listen, God know how to fight for his people. And if he got to use you to fight, he'll use you. He'll use you. You understand what I'm saying? But in the meantime, the in-between time, listen, I want to be harmless as a dove in the meantime. Because when it's time to speak, God said, go ahead, I'll speak for you. <laughs> God said, go ahead. I'm, when you lift your hands, I'm going to rain fire down from heaven. You understand? Because of that. And that's why we need to really be mindful because when I go back to think about the scripture, um, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, therefore having these promises, be beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. My thing is this, I'm going to forgive you because of the repercussions of what God may say or God will do. Because the thing is this, he, when God fixes it, we, we always say when God fixes it, he fixes it well. So then we have to allow God to fix it and fix it well. And so my thing is this, I don't fear what your opinion of me is or how you think of me or whatever. I fear in my lack of responding to you correctly. What will be my repercussion from God? Mm-hmm. 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 You last of my words. I want what I want to know what God thinks about me. I want to know what God thinks about how I handle this situation. You understand? Because what you think about me don't matter. You understand? Um, Pastor Shiva, I like that. I like that scripture in, in Isaiah. I, I I love it. I love it. And and and, and that's I can work with that scripture because a lot of people won't accept the fact I created evil. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. And and we but we need to know. We we, we need to know. We don't understand that our inability to forgive what it brings on to us. We don't we don't understand. When the enemy 
showed up in the garden. He showed up as a serpent. And which means he 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 got in there really smooth and undetected. Here we have our unforgiveness. And if we allow our unforgiveness to continue, we are likely, likely to experience, look at this, look at the enemy creeping in, depression, mm -hmm. right? Bitterness mm -hmm. and or both, okay? And then, you know, you find that yourself, is, you're always sick. We don't realize it. Let me tell you something. I love one of my aunts and I love mm -hmm. her to beans. And it, we, her and I had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the conversation, I'll never forget when we were sitting in my car. And I said, and I heard the Lord say, tell her this. I said, the Lord said, if you would just forgive, he will heal you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As anointed as that woman was, she could not grasp the ideal of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In that situation, in that particular situation. She could not grasp it. And I believe that we, we end up taking on all these illnesses. We don't get it. Listen, I'm going to forgive you and let it go. And then you forgive. You haven't forgive people that's dead. They're dead. The past can't be changed. You got to grow from it. The, the past, you can't change the past. Mm -hmm. The past is just that. So the thing about it is to just move. How do we agree to disagree if this is possible? Listen, let me tell you something. I have a problem with the um, agree to disagree because technically you're not agreeing. Yeah, you are. No, yeah. we're agreeing that we're not agreeing. But we're not agreeing. No, why? Because we can't reach an agreement. And but if you would just accept what I say is right, then there you go. Have... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> let that go. I, I. How do you agree to disagree? Listen. I cannot force you to believe what, what what I am saying. I cannot force you to accept what I'm saying and vice versa. So I tell you what, let's agree to disagree because we're going to disagree in this area and we can leave this alone and move on to something else. And if that, that's agreeing to disagree because you and I are not going to see eye to eye in this area. This is true. So we agree to disagree. But I like that because it took me a minute for me to grasp that concept because I really struggled with that in that area. And so the Bible said, how can two walk together unless they agree? Now, the thing is this, if he say go left and I say go right, at some time, and at some time we have to, to, to come to an impasse and say, okay, but I want you to know if it's wrong, I am going to talk about you all the way back to the right path. But but we, we we have to take that choice. So we have to agree to disagree because it gives us another option. And, and, and um, just, uh, Pastor Shiloh's forgiveness is setting a prisoner free. The prisoner being you. You, you ain't. Yes. That's it. But listen to this. Brother Jackie, you asked us to speak to church hurt. Do <laughs> Preaching. Preaching. That's a whole nother segment. By itself, cause I, raise your hand if you've been hurt in the church or by the church, by the pastor, by the deacons, by the mothers, been put out the choir. So that's a whole nother thing. All to church hurt is a beast. Is a beast because oftentimes when it comes to church hurt. They doing it and put I'm only doing this because I love you. Really? Uh, okay. But we're going to get to that next time. Okay, we, well, let me tell you what right I think now. about church hurt. Church hurt derives because you have a bunch of misinformed, misled people. Point blank, period. That's my analogy on church hurt. Um... And because they don't know how to either correct mm -hmm. or communicate, mm -hmm. or they are infatuated with the title that they have been given, um, they think um, their opinion is the only one that matters. There's no love in it. Um, there's no 
um, accuracy in it and it's based solely upon their opinion. So, so you hurt someone's feelings and say it's a rod of correction. I don't think that the rod of correction comes with the hurting of feelings. It comes with a conversation. And if you can tell me in scripture, not because you've twisted the scripture to fit your situation. Mm -hmm. Not because you twisted it to fit your situation, but this is because what the scripture says in regards to what you're doing. Listen. Listen. You, you, yeah, I know. I can't see, right? <laughs> church, church, you... You can't take you listen. The, the the word of God it comes to correct us. This much I know, okay. When you correct a person with the word of God, not based on your opinion, okay, not based on how you feel, but when you but when you come to a brother or sister with scripture, you said because oftentimes there's some things are happening that if what I did offended the church or hurt the church, maybe I did it out of ignorance because I didn't know any better. Or you're chastising me because you don't know. And oftentimes we try to judge other people's calling based on what your we call. think. <laughs> what we think. Your opinion. You understand what I'm saying? See, but 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 church hurt. Church hurt. A lot of people have left the church based on man's opinion. Ain't never brought the Bible into the conversation. You understand? But brother, you can't sit in the pulpit because you... Huh? What you mean? I think every preacher should wear a tie. Where well, that's in the book? Stuff like that can I, cause hurt and problem to people. And I think that kind of like happens when people think they have autonomy over you. And the thing is this, if you don't study to show thyself the proof so that you can rightly divide the word of God so that you won't come up short, then they can tell you anything. Anything, anything, anything. And, 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 and that's the problem. They're all, it's all hidden under the guise of um, I'm the pastor or I'm the deacon and you don't know. And I'm a member for 35 years. You just got here. I've seen I members for 35 church. years and they still need to go back and, and eat pablum, as they listen, say. <laughs> listen, something Pastor Shiloh said, and that's so true, setting yourself free. And I believe that with forgiveness, if you put it in your heart and you purpose it in your heart to forgive, you're setting your own self free. You understand? Because like Pastor Dana brought up all these things that we harbor because of unforgiveness, all the sickness that comes upon us because of unforgiveness. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. But I stand behind this, man. I, I don't want nothing to hinder me from getting in heaven. I don't want nothing to come between me and my relationship. I don't need my prayers Hinder is then because I, I I refuse to forgive so and so so and so who crossed me or hurt me because I just want to be right. I, I want to be saved. I, I want to be saved. You understand? And you know I believe that of the rest. I don't want to lose my focus on who God is and what God is doing for me because I want to go on in the Lord. In other words, I don't want to be like Samson. Because my hair gone, I don't got no strength. You understand what I'm saying? Because of unforgiveness, I want to know that when I call upon the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he'll hear me and that he'll answer. So, as you see, that was our topic for this week. And we we suffered some technical um, today. And I just, I guess it was because there was a conversation that needed to be heard that the enemy just didn't want to be heard or maybe Facebook didn't want to listen. The truth shall make you free. But um, it's been a topic that I think is an awesome topic. And it gives us a better insight on this thing that we call life. Our desire is to just become better believers. And just be, be better people. 
And then as Pastor Shil Shiloh say, higher, higher, higher. That's it. Because th it makes no sense to be shut in <laughs> all these days. And you going to come out smelling some, like some type of smoke. Listen, come on, come on with Listen. Strengthen. You should have been strengthened. You should have had. Listen, there should be a new, a new goal and a new, a new attitude about life. Mm -hmm. You know. And so with that, we, you know, we just thank you for joining us. Um, I have made the decision that on next week, Tuesday at six. I hope six is good for everyone. We will go. We want. We want to stay on this forgiveness because we need to understand that if we allow unforgiveness to continue, we are likely to just become stuck. And we need. We need to understand that forgiveness. <laughs> it can't start until we forget our own. We recognize our own shortcomings. Mm -hmm. That's it, Pastor Shiloh. Don't be shut in and shut that. out, hello. I was going to say that, Pastor. <laughs> we can't hmm. receive, re receive forgiveness without acknowledging our need for it. You know, you know those hidden sins, omitted and committed, mm. you know. Um, and, and, you know, that's always my prayer. Because we, we need to understand that we are still like wretched rags. And we still need Jesus, cause if we've made it, then we what's what's the sense of having Him to intercede for us? Because we already know. So with that being you on next week Tuesday at six. Now I want you to know that in this race that we call forgiveness, in this process, there are obstacles to it. You got some hurdles that we got to jump over. So we're going to discuss some of those uh, fears and misconceptions on next week. And we thank you again. And we love you. You can also follow us on Lipstick Chronicle Ministries 2019 at YouTube. Um, we will happily send you the link. Just hit us up and we will send you the link. So all our um, services are on YouTube. Um, and again, we thank you for joining us and we ask Pastor Lewis to close us out in prayer. Amen. Um, I want to thank all of you, my father's children, for being a part of this discussion. I want to thank you for joining in with us, your insight and your input. And you know, that when it comes to God, you know, formality is good. Formalities are good. But I believe in just letting go. And just letting loose. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I believe just letting go and letting loose. If I stumble and mess up a word or something, listen. Mm -hmm. Y'all pray for us. Y'all pray for us. Because as long as God wants to come to you guys like this and you get in on the conversation and, and we're growing and we're being strengthened by it, we will continue until God says otherwise. Amen. God bless you, um, Brother Jackie. Thank you for your um prayer and, and, and your thoughts and your love. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, O God, for what our eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. We thank you, O God, for the sharing of the word with our brothers and sisters through and by God, the internet. We pray, O God, that through this discussion, O God, that somebody will be strengthened, somebody will be restored, O God, that somebody will find the power to forgive. Yes, God. Oh God, in the name yes, of the Jesus, name of oh God. Jesus. We pray, oh God, that as, as, as we go off the air, oh God, that you will be with them, oh God, that turn them, oh God, that you would minister, oh God, continue to minister unto their heart, continue, oh God, to minister unto their mind, oh God, bring deliverance, oh God, and bring wholeness, oh God, into their lives, God, for we come against the devil, we come against the enemy, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Yes, in, the in the name of, name of Jesus, Jesus, God. And we thank you now, God, thank for the God. victory in all things through yes. Jesus Christ, yes. our Lord. Father, we thank you right now, oh God, God, in the name of Jesus. I speak words of peace. I speak words of deliverance. I speak words of healing, oh God. Make whole in every way. And on every side, oh God, in Jesus', Jesus name, name, God, we thank you for the people of God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen and praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Love ya.